Okay, so it's time for um, the follow-up lecture for March 25th. Um, so we've got four topics um, that were listed on Piazza. Synthesis of 3-nitroacetophenone and why the order is important. Converting bromobenzene to cyanobenzene. And then a couple of problems from the problem set. Problem set 19.6b and problem set 18.6. So let's first start off with this first one. So we had the synthesis of this. Now both of these are meta directors. Meaning theoretically, either of these could direct the incoming electrophile meta. To make the nitro compound, you use nitric acid. To make the carbonyl compound, use an acid chloride and aluminum chloride. Now, thing is, this pathway is the correct order. Now, this is very, very subtle. It has to do with Friedel crafts. Adding carbonyls onto benzene rings has a bit of a limitation. Will not work on strongly deactivated rings. And in this class, what we define as strongly deactivated are meta directors. So if you have a meta director on a benzene ring, there's a good chance you won't be able to add a carbonyl to it. If you try, that reaction will likely fail. The other EAS reactions that we have, nitration, bromination, Chlorination do not have this limitation. They can be added to very deactivated rings. It's only the Friedel crafts that won't work on strongly deactivated rings. That means this step right here is a problematic step. Okay. Now, had another question. About, could you just take bromobenzene and react it with copper cyanide in DMF to make cyanobenzene? And the answer to this is no. We, will, we only have one method of really making a nitrile, and that's using copper cyanide when the leaving group is exceptional, when it's a diazonium compound. That's the only way we have to do it. The mechanism's not really an SN1, it's not an SN2 mechanism, it's a strange mechanism um, I actually don't know it off the top of my head, but it is reliant on two things, the diazonium and you have copper present. There are reactions in which you can replace bromine and go right to the cyanide. 
but these reactions use a very special metal catalyst. They use a palladium type catalyst, and that's not going to be in our repertoire. The only thing that we have in 345 that will do this is this. Um, in real life, there is a way of taking the, the bromobenzene right to the um, benzonitrile. But that's not one of the things that's going to be in our toolbox. And to make this diazonium, it's a couple steps. Can make that from the amine. That amine you get from reducing a nitro group. And that nitro group comes from nitration. It's long and convoluted, but this is the way to go. There's not an easy way otherwise of going from bromide to cyanide that we have access to. Problem set 196B. Ah, it's an NMR problem. So, a way to attempt this is start by figuring out the number of rings and double bonds you have. So, we got the DBE equation 12 times 2 plus 2 minus 18. I'll divide by 2. 24, 26, 26. Minus 18 is 8. 8 divided by 2 is 4. 4 dBEs. Between, okay. Between 6 and a half and 8, we have something. So this suggests a benzene ring. If we total up all of our protons, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 6 plus 2. 6 is 12, 12 plus 6 is 18. All the protons are accounted for. So this proton, this benzene ring, only has two hydrogens on it. That makes this a tetra-substituted benzene ring. Now, if we zoom in on that, we see that that is a doublet. Moreover, if you look at the spacing of these doublets, the spacing is quite narrow. So think about what that means, the relationship of those two hydrogens from each other. It's narrow, that means it's a small coupling constant. So we're looking at a meta coupling because these don't dip all the way down to the baseline. So that suggests this two hydrogens meta to each other. If it's ortho to each other, the doublets would be much wider. Here they're quite a bit narrower. Also look at these. This right here, those are some pretty broad peaks. When they're broad like that, that suggests OHs, two of them. If you look here, we've got two, well, we have four lines right here, but this is roughly going to be two signals. There's two integrations here, and also, so if we split them right down the middle, the one on the left 
is six hydrogens, one on the right is six hydrogens. What we have here is a doublet of six hydrogens. Here we have a doublet of six hydrogens. So this doublet of six hydrogens suggests two CH3s connected to a CH. This doublet of six hydrogens suggests two CH3s connected to a CH. If we look down here, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Ah, this suggests a CH next to two CH3s. And this suggests a CH next to two CH3s. And see how this is in agreement. And if we put what we know together, we have a C6H2 fragment. We have two CH3H3 CH3 fragments, two isopropyl groups, so that's C3H7, and we have two of those. So if we sum them up, C6H2, C6H14, we get C12H16, our formula is C twelve H eighteen O two. Subtract these C twelve H sixteen and we get H two O H two O two. Or another way to think about it is two OHs. And that's confirmed by these broad peaks right here. So these are our fragments. Go ahead and pause this video and try to figure out how these fragments fit together on a whole. Essentially, we have this piece here has four open spots to it. Which is nice because we have four groups. We just have to fit those groups to that slot. Now, if we take a look at the chemical shift here, 6.6, .6, that's to the right of the various fringe of the aromatic region. Remember, the aromatic region is typically between 6.5 and, and 8. This is way on the right of it. That suggests that these two are next to some electron donating groups. So, here are our choices. We can put an OH here and an OH here. That would put them ortho and para to that. Or we can put them the two OHs like so. And then that means the remaining two groups go here or here. So those are our possibilities. Which one? Think about it. Okay. This one right here has a plane of symmetry.
See that? That plane of symmetry means this hydrogen and this hydrogen are going to have the same chemical shift. They're going to be identical to each other. So these would be a singlet. And these OH would also have the same chemical shifts. Well, the molecule on the left does not have a plane of symmetry, meaning the H's are different, the aromatic ring H's are different, the OH's are different, and the isopropyls are different. So you get unique signals for all of them. So this is the answer. Okay. Problem set 18, number six. Okay, so as chloride trilithylamine, I know it's tempted to put this on the aromatic ring, but we don't have aluminum chloride presence. Aluminum chloride is what's necessary to put it on the aromatic ring. Use triethylamine, all that's happening here is reaction of an acid chloride with an amine. That creates that. Followed by nitration. Well, we have an ortho para director. So nitration would add the nitro group para to the ortho para director. And all that's left is to go from the molecule on the right, the molecule on the left. Essentially, what we're doing is we're clipping off this group right here. We're going from an amide to an amine. Well, it might help if you know that not all the, the products of this reaction are shown. You have the product of this reaction. Here's acetic acid. Going from there to there, all that is is a hydrolysis reaction. Now, amide hydrolysis, amides are notoriously slow in hydrolysis reaction. So to help it along, we have to heat this up. Also, we can't use a catalytic amount of H2SO4. mainly because what's formed is an amine, and the amine, or actually technically it's an aniline, anilines have a tendency to be basic, and so you need a full equivalent of sulfuric acid to counteract that. Otherwise, the reaction stops after a couple of times. So the mechanism of this reaction is a nasal transfer reaction. When we protonate carbonyl, And then water attacks. So 
get a tetrahedral intermediate. Deprotonate. Now you want this to actually be the leaving group. So you protonate that. Now that's the leaving group. You can use either of these two OHs to swing its electrons down to kick that off. And then the amine takes that proton off right away. Giving this, and this has a pKa around 5-ish or so. It's probably a little bit less than 5. Um, 5 corresponds to an aniline. But this has an electron withdrawing group, which makes it even more acidic than normal. And, but the thing is, you've lost your strong acid catalyst. And so if you don't have another acid catalyst, you can't start the reaction again and keep on going. So if you used a catalytic amount of sulfuric acid, the reaction would just stop. Now, technically, 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 the product of just heat, acid, and H2O is actually the protonated amine. If you show it that way, fine. If you did this reaction, you could have done that with heat, acid, and water. And you could have also done a second step here, sodium hydroxide to basically deprotonate this again. But in this class, we're not gonna worry about the protonation state of nitrogen, whether it's protonated as an ammonium or not. Okay. All right, and that's all we've got and we'll Tune in on Friday.